Good to see everybody. Good morning. Um, this is a, a, a great day for the University of Texas and also at the same time a day to honor the past um, for a moment. But before we get into, uh, into the full presser and introduction, I just want to thank a couple people real quick. I want, first, I want to thank um, Sarah Baumgartner. Uh, um, you all know who she is. She, she's she's uh, head of, oversees all of our sports, and she did an amazing job on this search, and her due diligence um, does not go unnoticed, and uh, I can't thank her enough for her effort in leading this effort. Number two, uh, Drew Martin, who day, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, works with our swimming program and oversees our external operations. Both of these people um, are intimately involved in our swimming program and uh, your leadership. Um, I love you both very much, and what you've done throughout this process has been great, but especially Sarah Baumgartner in this process has been phenomenal. Last but not least, I, I think uh, looking at a search of this magnitude, I want to put this in perspective for a moment. You have a guy that uh, started coaching here in 1978. Coach Daryl Royal hired him. Think through that for a moment. Coach Royal hired him. He won 15 national championships. He's taken a team to the White House since Jimmy Carter was president. You think about the magnitude of what he built this program to. And you're asking to fulfill that job in a time where it's lonely when you're thinking, who can replace a legend? And there's many conversations, there's thousands of alumni that swam for Eddie that would call and say, I swam for Eddie. I go, no, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're a CEO of a company. He goes, no, I swam for Eddie and I swam for Texas. That's who they were. And that's their gravitas of who they are. And when Eddie announced his retirement again, before the season started, I said, Eddie, are you sure? He goes, I'm 82 years old. It was never about winning championships. A definition of a coach is believing in someone when they don't believe in themselves. And coach was never about winning championships. His whole idea was, can I get the very best out of someone? If they fulfill their potential, championship will come. And there's many conversations I had with Eddie along the way, and I referred to him as Yoda. And it was not only talking about us and what we were doing, it was about the program. And for four or five months, it's a lonely time sitting there thinking of the daunting task of what lies ahead. And 13 years ago, CP was looking for a new coach and went to Eddie. And Eddie says, I got a coach that can do this. She's at Georgia. And we hired Carol Capitani. And how reverse roles reverse is 13 years later, I'm sitting in the room by myself thinking, gosh, this is a big daunting task to, to hire, replace Eddie. And I said, I got to talk to Carol. Carol comes up. I said, Carol, I just need your advice. And if you all know who Carol, she's a really close talker. She'll sit on my desk and we'll just have these in-depth conversations for hours about how do you replace a legend? And she goes, you don't. I go, who do you think the best coaches are out there? And she lists five or six coaches. And she goes, okay. She goes, but they're not right fits. They're not fits for the University of Texas. Because you just heard Steve Sarkeesian play, and you, you see all of our head coaches here. I would say we have the finest collection of head coaches in America. Because they have great character. They're about student athletes, and they're selfless. And they win at the highest level. But they're part of our family. As we were again through this, I said, hey, Carol, Unequivocally, you are our head coach of our women's and diving program at the University of Texas. There's no doubt about that. And that does not change. She is our head women's and diving coach. Yet I relied on her constantly. I said, okay, Carol, tell me what. As we were going through, she says, you know, there's a dark horse. I go, there's a dark horse. You're not going to believe it. I asked him one day on the deck, hey, what do you think about Texas? And his response was, hmm, I'm happy where I'm at. Keep me posted. I'm like, so you're telling me we have a chance, Carol. And from that moment on, it was Buford T. Justice in hot pursuit of what the possibility would be. And at that time, conversations continued to happen. And I think last Tuesday, like, uh, like um, my daughters do today, they FaceTime 
I FaceTimed Bob Bowman. He goes, hello, pulls up. The great white shark pulls up. Hey, how you doing, my friend? He goes, hey, you interested in the University of Texas? He goes, I'm interested in that job. I'm going to go win a national championship first. And I asked him, why are you interested in the University of Texas? He goes, I was 12 years old and Eddie took that job. I've watched what he built and who he's recruited, and that job is the best job in America. And, and most coaches talk about the shadow of Eddie. And Bob talked about complimentary to Eddie. And when I sat down, I looked at a resume of both. And you think about uh, of the, the amount of championships that Eddie's won, the amount of Olympians, a head coach. You go, God, who can replace that? You can't. But you look at another titan in that industry. And everyone says, oh, he was a coach of Michael Phelps. It's phenomenal. But I was at Arizona when they dropped swimming at Arizona State. Dropped it. Said no mas. And I watched a coach take over a program that in nine years this past week he won a national championship. He's been an Olympic head coach. He's coached thousands, uh, multiple of Olympic gold medalists. Yet what he did with that program is something that we all aspire to. Take over a program in its ashes and build it to a national champion. Today I am proud to announce that our head swim and diving coach for our men is Bob Bowman. The only person that has the fortitude, the ability to take over a program built by the great Eddie Reese. Bob Bowman, welcome to the University of Texas. Thank you, Chris, very much. It's an honor to be here. Um, like you said, this is dream job for any coach in this country or in the world. And I feel like we have an opportunity to honor Eddie's legacy because nobody replaces Eddie Reese. I'm certainly not his replacement. I'm just the next one. <laughs> but I can be me. And Carol and I are going to work together to reimagine how swimming can work and Matt Scoggin uh, in a way that's unique and a way that will kind of propel Texas swimming and diving into the future. So I'm happy to take your questions. Raise your hand if you have a question, we'll get a mic to you. Start right up for you, Thomas Jones from the Statesman. Coach, uh, welcome to Austin. Thank you. Um, there's a new position created for you. Like, how would you define the position compared to Eddie's position here? Right. And how much appeal would that hold for you to take the job here? Uh, the director of swimming role did have an appeal for me to come here because I feel like what you've seen in the landscape of swimming uh, in recent years is there is a huge advantage towards being able to have men's and women's teams work together, not mainly to capitalize on resources. Facility usage is much easier when we kind of work together. I think recruiting will be much better when we're doing it together. Um, we can have more coaches who can be more specific in the training groups. Like you could have a coach coaching breaststroke, somebody coaching distance swimming, somebody coaching sprinting, instead of maybe two coaches doing everything, right, separately. So there's a lot of synergy there. And my role is to sort of shepherd the two programs into the next era of doing that. And it'll be a process. It's not going to be today everything's changed. Today everything is pretty much the same and will be for a little bit. But my goal is to see where we can find areas where we can gain an advantage by really working together and to kind of foster that as we go along. Stay up front, Kurt. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Bob, what was the best coaching advice you gave Michael Phelps? And would he have won an Olympic medal without you? Michael would have won an Olympic medal without me. You could have probably coached him to an Olympic medal. But <laughs> I don't know about 23. That was, the, that was the key, how many he could do. The main part about Michael was, uh, you know, Michael doesn't need a coach, but his mom really did. So that was my biggest work, was working on the mom. Um, the advice that I gave Michael was be you and do your thing. That's what anybody needs to do to be their best. They have to be who they are, and they have to know who they are and what they're about, and step up in the moment and go for it. And that would be it. And the far right coach, Chip. Hey, Chip. Uh, congratulations, Chip Brown. Thank you. 24-7. Um, what experience did you gain maybe from your time at Michigan or 
you know, running the aquatics in Baltimore to help you build that Arizona State program into a national championship program? Well, everything. You know, I, I, I often apologize to the guys at Michigan because I knew nothing about college coaching when I went there. But every mistake I made there, and it was about a million, has benefited the ASU guys because I didn't make it there. So, you know, it, it really helped that I had been at Michigan and a wonderful place. Um, and certainly in Baltimore, we, you know, I ran the facility, did a lot of different things. So I could kind of take that expertise into the program at ASU as well because it was really a holistic thing of how we put it together. Um, but, yeah, I've certainly learned from all those. In the middle, Joka. Jo uh, Pinsa, oh, hey. Joka, welcome. Uh, just Chris talked a little bit about you, your relationship with Carol, but also swimming and diving, what your relationship with Matt is and how you view the, the diving aspect of this. I have a great relationship with Matt. Um, we were, he helped me hire my diving coach at uh, ASU. <laughs> we worked on him, so I know him quite well. Um, and I am super excited to be at a place where diving is excellent and will be an integral part of the program. So I'm, I'm very excited to work with Matt. Back middle, Josh. Hey, Bob. Uh, yeah. Josh Newman from LoneStarLive.com. Uh, obviously, it's an Olympic year, and you have a training group. Can you just speak to maybe what your timeline is in terms of continuing to coach your guys Got it. through the trials, through Paris, and how that kind of fits sure. in with uh, Texas? Well, actually, the transition here is going to be pretty good because Eddie's going to be remaining with the guys here until the trials, mm -hmm. through the Olympic trials. So I'm not even going to be involved in any of their, you know, maybe cheer them along or something, but like Eddie's going to do the nuts and bolts of all that. And that frees me up to do my pros. So it'll be a combination of me kind of working with them. Uh, actually, ASU's allowed me to do that in Phoenix, in uh, Tempe for a little bit. So that's wonderful. So I'll do a little bit there in the, these recent weeks because, you know, they just kind of figured out what's happening. Uh, and then we'll go to San Antonio next week, big pro swim. I'm sure a lot of people will be there. Uh, and after that, I'll be there a little bit, here a little bit, and we go to Colorado for my big altitude camp that I do every May. That'll be part of our program here. Uh, and when we get back, they'll probably come here to finish up for the trials for three weeks. So that's kind of the, the answer to that, but should work in the short term. In the middle, Roger Wallace. Hey, hey right. Coach. Uh, you and Eddie have worked together in Olympics and things like that. What, what have you learned from him over the years, too, that, that might help you in, in this position? Well. I couldn't need, we'd need hours to tell you all that. But uh, Eddie has always been a sounding board for me to ask questions. I would come and watch his practices when I was coming up to learn how, you know, he worked his magic. Um, try to, and every time I ever saw him, you pick up something because he's always evolving. The thing that, I, that it struck me most about Eddie was that he's constantly learning and the program's growing. He doesn't just do the same thing all the time. Even if it works, he changes it, right? Because you have to do that to kind of stay up with what's happening in the sport. And to, to be around somebody who's done this for 50 years and consistently been at the top, uh, that's a, it's a tremendous resource. Uh, my favorite thing about Eddie is he would send me text about what happened in practice, but it was really an email that he sent in the text, right? It would be like. <laughs> Back by the cameras, Coleman. Uh, obviously a great accomplishment and, and what you did at ASU and winning the title this past weekend. Have you been able to reflect on that at all in the last 48 hours or can you just describe kind of the, the whirlwind since yeah. Saturday night when you guys won the trophy? I have reflected a little bit. You know, I haven't slept much so I'm not sure I'm thinking all that clearly but uh, <laughs> it was an amazing thing to be honest, to be with the team and their parents and the alumni Saturday night, we had a get together. And that's where I got to kind of sit back and watch the guys that were on my first team at ASU interacting with the guys that are on the championship team and kind of think back about how we got there. Um, I always like to tell the story, my first year at ASU, you know, when we have practices, you normally, they normally swim in the little suits, right? Those little Speedos, right? small suits and then some days we put on the racing suits and and race and practice the bigger ones and so for the first time we're going to do that in my first year at ASU I uh, said hey everybody bring a suit tomorrow we're going to suit up and one of the kids brought a three-piece suit and a tie to practice the next day so that's kind of where we were when we started and then so to see all those guys kind of be feeling part of what we did this past weekend which in many ways was surreal it, it was amazing that was great. Back by the cameras again, Tyler. 
Hi, Bob. Congratulations, Thank Tyler Felton, KD Sports. Welcome to Austin. Thank you. I'm curious about Eddie. He's always one with words yeah. when it comes to being a little bit funny. What was your conversation like before you took the job that you had with him and maybe after uh, with Eddie? Um, you know, before I took the job, um, we didn't really talk about it. <laughs> Because I was in, it was in the middle of the NCAAs, right? So I was just trying to be totally focused on the thing. Afterwards, when we talked, it was just – Eddie and I are on the same wavelength on many, many things, right? Like, we approach swimming the same way. We know that technique is important, and we know that the main thing that we have to do is help these guys and women, in this case now that, that I'm here, you know – just keep getting better every day. Just get a little bit better. And if you do that and long enough, the big things happen at the end. Um, so I think that's where we bond. We're both process guys. We know that the things that make the championships are what happens on Tuesday afternoon over in that pool. It's not sitting around thinking about a trophy. Um, the other part that I think that we share, and you know, I would say this about my ASU team, um, is that you have to behave and live like a champion long before you win a championship, right? My guys at, AF, at ASU have been champions for three or four years. They lived like it. They thought about things that way. They worked like a champion. They made good decisions like champions do. We had a thing over there that was our big thing, was like mistakes not made. Those are the things that win the championships. So they had, they had to learn how to not make the things that keep you from getting a championship, right? So you do that for three or four years, and you constantly start getting better and just keep doing that. The next thing you know, somebody's handing you a big trophy. So I feel like Eddie and I resonate in that way as well. Got one last question on the far right, Chip Brown. Um, Bob, what are the key things you look for in a, in a prospect coming to your program, and what was the message, if you've already given it, to the – current members of the Texas uh, program? I have not met the current members yet. That will be this afternoon. But what I'm looking for is somebody who wants to improve, right? And obviously at Texas we're looking for fast swimmers who want to improve, right? <laughs> they have to swim at a level, right? They have to be at a certain place. But I'm really interested in guys who want to come in and learn and grow and be comfortable in a process where they're going to get real feedback, and be able to use that to get better next time. So that's that's the main thing. Go Chang tight. Uh, CDC is going to come up for a second. And okay. We're take some photos. Sounds good. Right. Well, today is a, a, an awesome day for our swimming program. I think uh, uh, as, as we celebrate today, and, and Eddie is going to go and uh, have Coach Bowman meet the team again. I just want to reiterate the legacy of Eddie. We're going to celebrate him. Uh, on April 19th. But the gravitas of this hire would not have been made without uh, the leadership and the dedication and the fortitude of, of Carol Capitani. And I, I just want to again reiterate that and thank her for that because yeah. where we're at today and her being our, our, head, our head coach for our women's program, she's elevated something that he did. And the synergy of those conversations during this process is critical. And uh, we're just thrilled that we have a chance to have not only Bob here, but also have uh, Carol as our head women's coach is significant. And the synergy that I think we're going to be with them together, and one of, the, one of the things that Carol asked me was, I need a partner. Eddie was a partner. And I'm hoping today that you realize that, uh, that uh, we have a 2.0, if you will. <laughs> so thank you all for here, for our head coaches and staff for being here today. Um, we'll take a couple photographs, and we have a head coaches meeting we got to go to. Or you, if staff, or if you all want to talk to Eddie or Carol, they're there, and we can go from there. Okay. Will Eddie have a role? Will he be yep. like a GA or something? No, no, not <laughs> we. Eddie will not be the oldest GA. One of the things that we looked at with him, and, and I will say this: I'm walking down the aisle at men's basketball, and we had just lost to Tennessee. And I decided to go, I was sitting there with, uh, with uh, Lovo, I'm going to go to the end of the bench and just watch our team, they go shake hands. And here comes Rick Barnes. He walks right up to me, puts his hand on my face, he goes, didn't say anything about the game. He goes, how are you going to replace Eddie? Good luck. <laughs> like, you just won the game. What was that about? But the idea of, uh, of and we affectionately refer to him as Yoda. 
Eddie transcends sport. We've asked Eddie, and uh, he's accepted to be our coach emeritus, not not only for uh, uh, our men's program and 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 our but our entire athletic program. What he means to our coaches. There was times where uh, uh, Barnes will tell me I was hanging on too tight, and Eddie would go have a conversation with them. Or there's times with Mac, or even with Steve today, and all of our coaches. Um, he's a sounding board. He's been there. And it's not about executing in the pool. It's about how you communicate the struggles of a coach. I, I wear a suit and sit behind a desk. I don't know the struggles of our coaches. I don't know where, where they are in the, in the continuum. Coaches get the best out of young people. Yet sometimes a coach needs a coach just to say, hey, dude, you're, you're going through it. And there's no one better than Yoda. So he is gonna, he's gonna remain here in, in the capacity of, of a Coach Emeritus for all of our coaches, and for me as well. You, you gotta have a sounding board to say, tell me what is happening. Uh, you know, today in social media, coaches feel it. When you, when, you, when you write an article that truthful and you do an amazing job, sometimes it hurts, and the coach still has to internalize that, right? And he has to have someone to say, hey, it's gonna be greener pastures coming, fight through that. And that's, that's the beauty of, of of having coach uh, here with us. And, uh, you know, he's uh, 82 years old in age. He's really 62. And the guy is just, uh, when we were talking about Bob, because when, when we were, when Bob came, I go, who's your, who's your hire? And one of the things about Eddie, he said, hey, I want to be involved in that. Hard to go ask a legend who should follow a legend. He goes, I trust you. We sat down on the couch yesterday. He goes, well, who is it? And, I, and he looked at her and goes, Bob Bowman, isn't it? He knew before I knew. I could tell him. And that's his intuition. And then we, he was so, super excited about this opportunity for him and for our program. So he will be here in that capacity.